The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good evening and welcome to tonight's webinar on delegate registration. We'll do a couple of introductions first. Uh, the three presenters you're going to hear from this evening. My name is Robin Godfrey and I'm the executive director of Gala Choruses. We'll also have Sue Bell who is the Member Services Director for Gala Choruses. And Chris Denning is also with us. He is the developer of the Integra Planner software. A special thanks to Chris, who is based in London, for being willing to attend a webinar, webinar happening at 1 o'clock in the morning, his time. The participants in tonight's webinar are all muted. Um, we're expecting up to 60 participants, uh, but you do have the ability to ask questions. So as <clears throat> questions arise for you, type them in to the question box on your screen. And if we're not able to get to them immediately, don't lose faith. We will get to them before we're finished this evening. The topics that we're going to cover tonight, so we're, this is all about related to delegate registration. So we're going to deal first with the simplest case, which is also the majority of the way delegate registrations occur. The singer is going to go in and register and pay for themselves. We'll go through exactly how you as festival liaisons uh, can instruct your singers and help them if they have difficulty in getting registered. The more complicated case is when the chorus administrator is going to be doing the registering for all or several of the singers or staff members and then is going to pay for multiple delegates. And we'll work through exactly how you go about doing that. We have a feature that has been built into the software that deals with the ability to purchase extra early delegate registrations. And we'll go through how, how you do that and then how you release them to specific individuals later. We'll talk a little about scholarships, about transfers of delegate registrations within a chorus, transfers from one chorus to another chorus, cancellations, badge names, and pulling a report of the registered delegates for your chorus. We are recording tonight's webinar, so you will have it available to you uh, through the GALA website. Uh, within a day or so, we will have it up there, so both a copy of the PowerPoint slides and a recording of tonight's webinar will be available to you on the GALA website. Okay, for, we're going to start with that, what will be the vast majority of the registrations which is an individual singer going in to register themselves for festival. They're going to need to log in, and when registration is open, we will provide that link on the GALA website. For many of your singers, they are not going to have an account already in the Integra Planner system. Uh, for a lot of your chorus leadership who have registered for previous symposiums or managers and directors retreats, they will have an account, but for the majority of your singers, they probably will not. But start out by having them check 
to see if their email address exists in the system. Life will be much simpler if you always use the same email address because that's how the system identifies you. And we would prefer that you use a personal email address rather than a generic chorus email address. So that's your first step is check and see if the Integra system has you as a member. If so, enter your last known password and log in. If the system recognized you, but you don't remember your password, then just click on the reset link and the system will email you and you can go in and change your password. Remember that like most processes for resetting a password, that is a time limited process. So if you ask for your password to be reset, please check your email fairly quickly thereafter. Uh, don't wait a day or two uh, or it's going to have expired before you come back to it. If you didn't have, if the singer wasn't known to the system, then they'll have just entered the email address that they want to use and they'll hit the reset link uh, to obtain a first time password. Once an individual is set up in the system, they'll see a menu that will allow them to register as a delegate for whatever events are available to be registered for. Because Festival 2016 registration overlaps the registration for symposium, for our 2015 symposium, uh, people will need to be careful and make sure they're registering for what they intend to register. But you can see on the screen, the event is labeled at the moment, Test Festival 2016. That word test will be gone when we actually open the system up live. And they'll want to click on the green register as a delegate button. It'll ask you to update or verify your contact information. You're not required to provide a title or a middle initial or a suffix. Those fields are simply there if you wish to use them, but please train your delegates that the information that they input is part of what's going to turn up on their badge. And we'll look at a slide on that a little bit later on, uh, but make sure what you're putting into the system as your name is what you want to see on your delegate badge. On the registration page, you're going to see a couple of questions, one of which asks, will you be performing yes or no? This helps to sort out individuals who choose to register as delegates. Um, they may be uh, individuals' partners who are planning to attend enough of the chorus blocks and other events that it's a better financial option for them to be a delegate rather than to be purchasing single tickets. Uh, so that's the reason for the question, will you be performing yes or no? And do you have any accessibility requirements? Uh, we will once again have an accessibility coordinator as we did in 2012, and we will provide that information uh, to our accessibility coordinator uh, so that we know we're prepared uh, to deal with 
whatever anyone's accessibility needs are. You want to click Save to continue from there. And you need to select a registration type. Early, Youth, Senior, Disability. The only options you will have access to are the options that are open as of the date you're registering. And we'll go over the dates for those registration periods in just a moment. But what you see on the screen, if you're registering under the early delegate registration, you would just click in that spot. A youth Delegate, we define youth as being under 21. For disabled delegates, we define disabled as those collecting Social Security disability or its equivalent outside the United States. For seniors, we define senior as 65 or over as of the date festival begins. So that means that someone who is 64 years old as they're registering, so long as they will be 65 by July 2nd, 2016, is welcome to use the senior rate. We do not request documentation for any of those distinctions. It's simply on an honor, uh, on the honor system that you will register under the appropriate category. We do ask here for uh, if you are able um, to provide some assistance for our youth. Uh, there is a donation box at the bottom of this page. Uh, Gala pays the registration, the hotel costs, and part of the airfare to bring the youth to festival. So any amount that you are able to, uh, to give to assist with that would be very much appreciated. The dates, so early registration will run through the opening on May 26th through November 30th. Regular will run December 1st through March 31st and late April 1st through June 30th. The youth and disabled rate remains at 150, and there is no change in that rate over the passage of time. The senior rate then runs on the same time periods, May 26th to November 30th to access the early senior registration, December 1st through May 31st to access the regular senior registration, and then April 1st through June 30th, the late senior registration. Let's try to take a couple of questions here. Is a non-singing member still considered to be performing on that last screen? Um, no, I, th I think the ability for uh, the individual choruses to sort uh, their registered individuals by who's actually performing will be easier uh, if the response that you are performing is only for the people who are going to be on stage. Question as to whether the disability rate can be accessed by those who are on military disability as well. Yes, absolutely yes. Will there be any on-site registrations? Uh, yes, they would be at the late registration rate, uh, but yes, it is possible to register on-site.
then you want to, if you're ready to check out, you have the options to pay by credit card or to pay offline later by check. Uh, while the button you're pushing at the bottom of the screen just says PayPal checkout, um, make sure your folks understand that that's how you get to paying by a credit card, whether or not you are using PayPal. We'll look at that screen next year so that becomes clear. But at this screen, you have to click the PayPal checkout button, even if you're paying with some other type of credit card. Once you click on that PayPal option, you can see that you have the option to pay with your PayPal account or pay with a debit or credit card. So you just have to get through that first screen uh, to get to the place where you can enter your own debit or credit card. You are not required to pay with your PayPal account. For those who choose to pay by check, please have them include the invoice number with the check when they send it in. Uh, it will make our lives much easier in trying to match up the payment that we're receiving by snail mail uh, so that we can go in and update the Integral Planner to reflect the, pack, the fact that you've now paid. Um, so, it, so we're not sending your singers emails saying you haven't paid us yet um, simply because we can't figure out who it was that check was supposed to be paying for. If you select skip as your payment option, it's going to cancel your registration. So once you get to that screen where you're checking out, you need to either go down the PayPal path and pay by PayPal or credit card, or go down the pay offline path, unless what you're really intending to do is cancel your registration. You can always go to the page titled My Orders and see what it is you've done. That screen will show you what you've purchased. If it were paid, the payment status at the bottom would indicate paid. In this particular test registration, Sue had chosen the offline payment option. So it's reflecting the payment status as not paid. So that's kind of the end of the process of how you register uh, under the, the most common of circumstances, which is you have a, a single singer who wants to register and pay for themselves. The next section that we'll look at is if you, as the festival liaison or some other chorus administrator within your chorus wants to register and pay for multiple people. From the organization's administrative dashboard, you want to start by clicking the organization members button. And we're going to go through some screenshots of how this works. And then I'll turn this control of the screen over to Chris, and Chris will run it, run us through it, watching it happen live within the software. So you're going to see this 
process happen twice here, once slowly and then once uh, seeing it done live. When you go to that organization members screen, you're going to see the list of chorus members that Integra Planner already knows about. And if they have registered for festival, you'll see that indicated as well. If you look down in the list of names, you see a column that tells you whether they are or are not registered. If you need to register someone that the Integra Planner doesn't know yet, the first thing you have to do is add them to the chorus membership. You're going to do that through the Add or Edit Members. That's highlighted or circled in yellow there. From the registration menu, you're going to click the Add Member button. You're going to fill in the individual's contact information, including their email address. Sue, so would you walk people through what the system is going to do when a chorus administrator sets someone up in the system? What in what's going to happen? What what's that individual going to receive? Okay, um, when a chorus administrator sets up someone other than themselves the individual will be sent an automated email from the Integra system. You'll see it in your email inbox as being from Integra registration. And it will ask you to confirm that you do want to be added to the Integra system under the email address that was entered for you. Um, so just reply. There will be a link in the email to click and reply um, and verify your own information at that point. Okay, let's clear a couple of questions before we go too much farther. Um, we have a note from Joel Davis indicating that he has gone into, as the chorus administrator for his chorus, he's gone in and made some adjustment to the individuals indicated as members in his chorus and cleaned those screens up, uh, brought them up to uh, current, the individuals that are currently in those roles. Um, He's encouraging that other folks may wish to consider doing the same, and that's fine. There's a question about how does an individual, how does a delegate indicate what chorus they are in? Sue or Chris, can you help me with that one? Yes. Um, when you are filling out your contact information, there is a tab, um, a button for membership, and if you click on membership, there will be a box where you can select a course. All member um, courses within GALA will be listed in, a, in that box. So as you start typing, um, say gay men's chorus, you'll see a drop you'll see like a drop down menu. You won't be able to select them. Oh, I beg your pardon. You will be able to select them um, as you keep typing. But if you type in, say, Gay Men's Course, 
there are so many that um, you may not immediately see your particular course listed. Just keep typing until the list gets smaller and you're able to select your individual course. So basically you're going into a drop down box and you find your course and you click on it. Right. Uh, if for any reason uh, somebody's course isn't in the list, uh, just send Sue an email, uh, but they should all be there in the drop down. Question about what to do if someone is not currently in the system as an administrator but needs to be. Send Sue an email and she will set, set that up for you. Ah. The other option for that is um, any course, any current course administrator can make another member an administrator. But if, if there's nobody else in your course who's designated as an administrator, you can ask me. Other question, I have at least one member with no email address. Will he be able to register? Chris, all yours. Um, okay, we do need an email address, so I suggest that um, Either they get a friend to register them or set up a free email account, for example, on Gmail or Hotmail. That's just so that people can self-service their accounts, reset their passwords if necessary, and they have a way to log on. And if we have someone who just doesn't use computers, their festival liaison can register them. Um, yes, but they will need to put in a unique email address for that user, whether it's a free email address or, or anything. Okay. And, and it does need to be, excuse me, um, Robin, it does need to be a valid email address because you will receive um, certain messages. Okay. Will the drop down list of course names? list all courses belonging to GALA or just those courses who have registered for festival? All, all GALA member courses. Okay. If, a, if someone is coming to festival who is not a member of a GALA chorus, um, and there are some of those, um, we need to make sure that that drop down includes something that says unaffiliated or something similar to that because we will have folks registering who are Actually, not they a just, member. They just need to not select any chorus if they're not a member of any chorus. They don't need to choose unaffiliated. Okay, so they it's not a required. Okay. It's not a requirement. Okay. And presumably, they'd be selecting the not performing option. If I register a member who has no email, can I use my email address? Probably uh, the system is not going to allow two records with the same email address. So you would need to choose an email address um, that is not the email address that you use in the system. Is there a way to show you are a member of a small ensemble in addition to the parent organization? Yes, the ensembles are, will be listed along with the larger parent courses. Can someone perform in a blockbuster or other mass performance without belonging to a specific chorus? Uh, maybe, but again, I think we're covered with the fact that uh, that's not a required response. So if they want to register without an associated chorus name, they are free to do that. We're not programming any mass choruses um, in the same way that uh, there used to be. 
there will be opportunities for individuals to participate in like flash mobs, but not as part of a regular concert block. Okay. If you're registering several chorus members at once, you can get to that capability from the register members button on the registration page. Once you have the individuals you wish to register set up as members of your chorus, then you can simply go down through the list and select which type of registration you wish to purchase. So some of them may be youth, some of them might be disabled, someone might be a senior. Uh, you just go into that drop down and indicate what type of registration you're purchasing and the system will automatically fill in the price. We've always had a question about the festival liaison knows that they have additional individuals who are going to come, uh, but they're not sure exactly who yet, and they want to be able to purchase additional early delegate registrations. And in the past, that's frequently be done, been done by um, you know, John Doe types of registrations. And that just kind of clutters up the database with a lot of inaccurate members. So the system that's been devised to provide for that, there will be a section that the chorus administrators have access to that allows them to simply purchase registration credits of various types without registering a particular chorus member at that time. So you're free to come in and purchase, whether it's early delegate registrations or youth or disabled or senior. Uh, go in and enter the quantity that you wish to purchase. And again, the system will automatically price that out. Then you'll come in later and assign those credits to specific individuals, and we'll look at the screen that shows how you do that. If an individual, oh, wait a minute here. Okay. We have a question if a delegate is a member of multiple choruses, is that allowed in the registration? So, not a chorus and an ensemble, but multiple choruses. Chris or Sue, do we have the capability to deal with that? Sure. Um, you yeah. would just register. Yeah, um Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, um, you just pick more than one course from the list when you're entering your organization memberships. I'll show you that page a bit later on. Okay. So you, you only need to purchase one delegate registration, but you can be a member of multiple courses. Yeah. The question, when a course administrator is creating new members. Does that individual account have to be verified before they can move forward and then register that individual for festival? No. Okay. I don't, I believe they don't have to. Chris, is that true? They, they don't need to be registered. We, um, sorry, they don't need to have confirmed their email address. Um, they'll get an email asking them to do that, but the chorus liaison can still go ahead and register them. And then we have another question. Does a member registering as disabled need to provide proof? No, they do not. That is strictly on the 
honor method. But if you have certain accessibility requirements, be sure to note that as part of your registration. Please explain the term credits or credits dollars on account. In essence, yes, they are registrations on account. Uh, might, might be a little better way of saying it. Um, Chris, if somebody purchased uh, 10 early delegate registrations and then later it turned out that they only needed nine, and but they need a disabled delegate registration, do, do they have an ability to move from categories or do they have to stay within the category of what they bought? They need to stay within the category um, because there's quite a difference in, in the prices, um, but it the credit is a registration rather than a dollar amount and one of the expected ways of using it is that you might buy 10 delegate registration credits while they're discounted on the early rate. You don't then have to use them until whenever you need them and in fact then it may be the higher standard rate for someone who is purchasing without credits but that credit for that type of registration is still valid so you can use an an early delegate registration credit later on, um, but you should stick to the right youth, disabled, senior, standard credits. If there are odd cases where you've bought too many of the wrong sort of credits, I, I guess central administration will have to help sort that out. Okay. I think how you apply those becomes clear a, a little bit further on here. Right. The, the, the credits are transferable, so we'll get to that. Once you've completed, um, again, if we're in the world where you are a course administrator registering multiple people and perhaps purchasing registration credits that you're not at this point in time assigning to a specific person. Once you are done for that particular day, then you would go through and invoice and pay the green button at the bottom of the screen. The advantages of registration credits, you can purchase credits at early registration prices without committing them to particular course members, giving you some flexibility and cost savings. It also minimizes cancellations and the need for refunds. Those credits can be easily transferred within the course. And we'll talk a little more about course to course transfers later. Uh, but basically the concept is a registration marketplace, which Joel Davis helps us with where registrations can be transferred between courses through private payments. Um, and there is a small administrative fee associated with anything that requires uh, outside input. The things which you can do yourselves within the system, there is no fee for. At this point, I, I would like to turn the screen over to, uh, to Chris and allow him to just run us through what this all looks like live. Hi there. So I'm going to show you on our test copy of the system um, the, the bulk registration options and maybe some of the other points that were um, covered in questions and answers just a short while ago. So I'm logging in as a course administrator um, and it takes me straight to what's called the organization administrator dashboard. And there are a few different sections on this page. I can work with my own account. I've called myself Joe Admin. Um, I can work with my course account. I'm administrator for this course. And also we've set up as an example, a, an ensemble which is part of this course and I can also do things with the ensemble. 
Uh, I can see immediately there's a warning here saying I have an unpaid invoice because I've chosen to pay by check for something and either the check hasn't been received or it hasn't been marked as paid yet. So just to cover some of the points that were raised earlier, um, if I'm registering my own, setting up my own user account, after I enter my contact details, uh, I get this page asking me about my organization membership. So this is where you can say you're a member of one or more choruses and an ensemble, or if you're not a member of any chorus, you just don't fill anything in. And the way it works is that you just start, start typing something. So I type in New York, for example, and New York chorus pops up. There are so many choruses in the database we chose not to go through a list. We do everything by 